Hey everybody, welcome back today to Retro Tech. And uh, I just wanted to first start things off today by saying I'm sorry. I got a I made some mistakes in my last video. And this video is the video that just came out a couple days ago about ripple current and ripple current ratings on capacitors and how that pertains to CRTs. Now there's still some pretty good information as far as how ripple currents can affect a CRT or really any old analog device in that video, so I won't be taking that video completely down. Uh, I figured I'd rather correct the things that I made mistakes on in this update video, and the most important thing to me is that you guys have the right information when it comes to all this stuff. And so, first off, I did want to say thank you to Mark from the Retro channel. I'm going to give his channel a link down in the description of this video so you go check him out but he uh did reach out to me on twitter and sent me a dm kind of explaining where i had messed up on my explanation and my conclusions that i had come to based on personal experience and the information that i was studying about the ripple currents and what i had explained in that video now let's go ahead and i want to show you what i mean as as far as getting the correct information to you let's switch over my screen so I can show you what I'm talking about. I've got a capacitor here pulled up on Mauser, and this is the data sheet from a 50 volt DC 1000 microfarad capacitor with a 105 degrees Celsius temperature rating. And here's the size, 2000 hour life. And then finally down here is the ripple current rating. It's 950 milliamps. And so what I had said in my past video was that that rating was you know it's somehow tied to the fact that the capacitor was going to allow that much ripple through so like it was a negative thing as if the capacitor was going to filter out a lot of the uh, ripple current there and that's actually incorrect what's happening here is this ripple current rating is actually a longevity or life expectancy performance rating for the capacitor and what it means is that you can have a ripple current going through whatever, you know, the rail is for voltage on your circuit and you're using this capacitor on that circuit and your ripple current can get up to 950 milliamps and this capacitor can handle that and stay within its heat range and its tolerance uh, performance range before it starts to break down. But if you really get any higher than that, you're going to start really wearing out the capacitor a whole lot quicker. So, you know, to make a long story short, I screwed up. It's not actually the uh, the rating is not actually, you know, tied to adding additional current to the ripple. It's just how much the capacitor can withstand on the ripple. So the higher rating should, in fact, be a better indicator for how long the capacitor should live or meaning it should be a better capacitor if it has a higher ripple current rating. You know, here's another producer, Vache, that makes a similar capacitor. And if you look here, it does have a slightly higher ripple current rating. So that is something that I definitely wanted to clear up because I don't, um, the good thing is, is the majority of CRTs that I've worked on in my entire career of doing this it, the majority of those CRTs do not use higher than a 105 degree temperature capacitor. So if you're using the 105 degree temperature capacitor, most of the time it's going to be better performing than the one you're replacing it before. However, if you want to go further and test with trying something that has a higher milliamp ripple current rating, then you should see better performance and a longer life on that capacitor according to the data sheets and according to the correct information. So again, I am extremely sorry that I messed up on that. And uh, it's never my intention to you know throw bad information out there. Um, I just want to say a couple more things here about all this. So if you just wanted to know the correct information, that's it. That's, you know, that rating is, a, again, a statistic provided by the capacitor manufacturer that says if you have a ripple that you've measured on your voltage and you're using this capacitor in that then you need to have uh, the ripple not go out of this parameter 
and be too high or it will wear out this capacitor and the capacitor's ripple current rating isn't actually impacting the uh, the physical uh, ripple itself as far as like what I had thought previously. So for the fifth time, I'm really sorry. I don't, I, I will now tell you how I got to that crazy conclusion in the first place. And a couple, it, this goes back to a couple years ago when I really started digging into recapping a lot of CRTs. And I started with a lot of my own things. And this was um, also a time when I was developing cap kits because there weren't a lot of kits out there at all. And so the cap kit development pretty much involved me going through and a lot of times referencing things like the service manuals as well as the boards themselves that I was looking at and I've gone through before and shown you how I documented that but then again when you get to an order sheet like we've shown today there's all kinds of different options when you're ordering a capacitor and uh, we're actually not in a good stock period of time right now it's not as bad as it has been for the last you know six months ago but it's still not good so there are a limited number of choices but back when you had open stock and anything was available you had all kinds of choices so I had a job, two different jobs that I ordered some capacitors for. One was a BVM D20 that is my own personal D20. I still own it right now. And then the second one was for a 20L5 that I had in the shop. And I bought the largest uh, capacitors I could find at that 105 degree rating. I bought like 10,000 hours and the ripple current ratings were insanely high on these. And I thought, man, if I get this to work, then this is like a supreme upgrade that I should be able to basically say, hey, I can upgrade the PVM and give it so much better uh, performing parts that it will increase the life and you don't have to worry about anything. But the problem was the capacitors that I ordered, um, they did not react well in both of those situations. Uh, the first off, the 20L5, when I did the decap or when I did the deflection cap kit, I had all kinds of issues. I wish I had some kind of visual pictures to show you, but I don't because it was such a long time ago. But for the most part, I could not get the di or the deflection corrected at all on the screen. The controls would not adjust nearly as much as they should adjust. I had some interference on the picture, and overall. It was a bad situation. And for, to be frank, I had to take that cap kit out and I ordered a kit from Save on Pat. And then I just used his kit instead of my personal homemade kit. So I took those parts out. And when I put Pat's kit in, everything worked perfectly and as expected. So that was one indicator that I was like, hey, I went way too far on these capacitors. And then the same kind of thing happened when I put them in the BVMD series. This time I recapped the PA board. And the PA board got so funky, it started flashing bright lights that I thought I had messed up my entire BVM uh, because I went through and I recapped it and it worked for a little while, worked perfectly. So I went through and recapped all the boards in it. And what happened was somehow it just, you know, after a not even that long a time, it just started really showing interference. And the PA board especially, it just made some uh, awful things show up on the screen that I thought was going to be like a tube issue. I was very unsure. So in that situation, I talked to Pat again, <laughs> and I actually sent those boards all to him to service. And so he took care of all those boards except the PA board. I actually kept that. It's still in the shop. And he sold me a serviced PA board, and I figured I'd rather just have an extra so I have both of them for this monitor. So that is, you know, my experience of having bought those capacitors and, you know, then having the experience of put them in the monitors and having just terrible results really soured me on the idea of even making my own cap kits at all. So really since then, most of my capacitor kits have either been published along with my deep dive videos on a certain monitor or my cathode ray blog site or even um, all of them are published on my patreon page so that's all something that i've been keeping track of but that whole experience of having them put in my own monitors and having just a bad um you know bad things happen made me not want to have that happen to other people if i was going to offer these kits to them and have them have the same kind of issues that i did so then I started to get into this idea of, well, now 
caps are coming available again, so you have more choices. Um, we went through this period of time where stock has been really bad, obviously on all kinds of components, capacitors included in that discussion. So if the capacitors started to come back into stock like they had been, I was starting to think I should re-up a lot of my capacitors that I have in storage, which I did. So while I was doing that, I noticed more being in stock, and I thought that it would be a good time to kind of study more myself on what the ripple current meeting was. But I already started with this negative annotation with this ripple current and how it might be impacted. And for some reason, I got in my head the correlation between a higher ripple current would somehow be associated with, yes, a higher temperature and higher life rating, but like it was a cost of the performance on the capacitor for some reason like i associated that if you needed a li longer life to your capacitor that it would somehow let a higher ripple current go through and that's actually not the case um i was thinking that you needed to you know back down on that and kind of give or take a little bit in that relationship uh, and that was just based on that experience of doing that and then swapping it out for lesser capacitors than what i had ordered from my crazy high-end cap kit and having it work. So I took that personal experience and then I went into the Google machine and I sat there for goodness gracious, two or three hours just reading through posts and blog posts. That's the problem. You know, another issue that we're all dealing with here being in this kind of profession of uh, working and, and trying to document things on social media and online, especially YouTube. So uh, I found some information kind of intrigued my biases more that I had been starting to create. And that's how I got down the rabbit hole of thinking these were two tied things. And unfortunately, too, it's really hard to Google this kind of information and get a good result back that's direct that says, yes, this is how this works. This capacitor has a ripple current rating on the data sheet, and that means it can handle a bigger current than one that has a lower current rating. That's, that's just, you know, it might seem second nature to somebody who's been doing this or has a full background in electrical work and electrical engineering. But um, as I said many times on this channel, my whole passion for this has come out of me just loving these machines. And uh, what started as a hobby has now blossomed into a wonderful and uh, loving career. But the, the crazy thing about it is not having that, you know, traditional up upbringing of a university or any kind of degree uh, that uh, would teach me maybe these kind of things in a classroom setting. I've done all my learning online by searching these things out and also just doing things like watching YouTube videos and trying to determine what was the best information from that a lot of times. And so that's one of the big reasons I really love YouTube and I love the platform. I love the opportunity it gives people to share this stuff so that we can ultimately learn the right thing. Uh, but at the same time, being stuck here in my own little basement, man cave, thinking about these things myself and not having that opportunity to kind of get out of my bubble and, uh, you know, bounce ideas a lot of times off people who are smarter, more educated, know a lot more about this stuff than I do. That can be a detriment to me. So uh, I want to, in the future, just help you know, everybody learn what's right, what's the best thing to do. I wanted to make sure that you all had the right information here today. And again, just accept my apology this time. Know that there's a possibility that something like this could happen again in the future because I'm always going to be uh, uniquely cutting edge as far as like trying to problem solve. That's always something I just try to think of things differently, especially coming from outside of this industry and going into electronics you know you have a different background than a trained one so a lot of times it's going to point me in the wrong direction but i do think it also puts me in some creative positions and some interesting problem solving situations that do turn out to be good but this time you know hopefully there's no harm no foul for anybody and i just want to say that again we'll do better next time and in the future so i thank you for uh, hanging out here with me for this like 15 minute ramble and uh, excuse any edits or you know things if i got a little long-winded there and if you have anything that you'd like to clear up with me please leave a comment below and finally one more thing if you're a capacitor expert especially for anything like these aluminum little electrolytic capacitors these older style capacitors please i would love to talk to you and just like interview you of some questions if now this yeah i mean i'm not just gonna say like you need to know a lot about capacitors i, I want to know somebody who's like works in the field of capacitors and uh knows a good knowledge about them 
and basically knows a lot of these things that like second nature to what uh, we do, because I believe a lot of people would be benefited, benefiting from a conversation around a lot of this stuff that we just, you know, are looking at on paper and don't fully understand. And it's not as easy to get in there and get the right information uh, all the time, and, and especially without making a mistake first. So anyway, I'll see you all next time. Thanks again and have just a wonderful day.